This video is about experimental design. We're going to start off with some vocabulary about um, the design of experiments. Um, we're going to diagram some experiments and we're going to talk about some of the different types of experimental designs. In a large city school system with 20 elementary schools, the school board is considering the adoption of a new policy that would require elementary students to pass a test in order to be promoted to the next grade. To find out whether parents agree with this plan, the PTA randomly selects 20 parents from each elementary school and contacts them for their opinion. Um, so, let's talk about some of the vocabulary. Reading this scenario, we need to identify the population, the sample, the sampling method, and any potential bias. Let's start with the population. The population is um, whoever is the group of people or animals or objects that you're interested in uh, learning about. All right, in the problem it says we want to find out whether parents agree with this plan. So we are interested in the, the uh, opinions of our parents and um, we're talking about a large school system. So we're talking about our population is all the parents in the school system. Alright, the sample is going to be um, the number of parents that are actually surveyed. Um, Actually, let me go back to part A for one quick second. Um, we're only talking about elementary schools, all right? 20 elementary schools. This policy is only about elementary school students. So the population, I should be more specific. I shouldn't say all of the parents in the school system. Um, it's just the parents of elementary school students. Okay, so the population is all the parents of elementary students in the school system. Now the sample, um, let's note that we know exactly how many uh, parents are in the sample. There will be 400 parents because uh, we're told there are 20 elementary schools and um, we are going to question 20 parents from each school. So 20 times 20 is 400. So the sample is the group of 400 parents who are surveyed. All right, next we're asked uh, about the sampling method. Now, remember, uh, we discussed this way back at the beginning of the lesson, all right, of this uh, whole entire series. So these were the choices, convenience, self-selected, systematic, random, clustered, or stratified. Now, we specifically picked um, 20 parents from each school. <clears throat> we didn't pick whole schools, so it's not clustered. Clustered is if you picked, um, say, I'm going to pick, there are 20 schools in the school system. Say if I'm going to pick um, five schools and ask um, all the parents from uh, those schools. That would be clustered. But we didn't do that. We picked 20 from each school. So that's going to be stratified. Um, when, you're not, when you're doing whole groups, that's clustered. But when you're um, specifically doing a certain amount from each group, that's stratified. All right, so there you go. Now we're supposed to look for sources of potential bias. All right, I'm not seeing any source of bias. Um, we're picking 20 parents from each of the 20 schools. So we're spread out throughout. We're randomly picking the parents. Um, from each school, so um, it looks good to me. I think this is a solid, um, we're unlikely to get bias from this scenario. All right, let's look at uh, problem number eight. Some people have been complaining that the children's playground at a municipal park is too small and in need of repair. Managers of the park decide to survey city residents to see if they believe that city funds should be used to rebuild the playground. They hand out questionnaires to parents who bring children to the park. So what's the population? Alright, well the population is hinted at, hinted at right here. They're trying to survey 
city residents. So that's the population. Now the sample is going to be whoever is actually filling out the questionnaires. In this case, um, it mentions parents who bring children to the park. They're the ones who get the questionnaires. So I'm going to say parents at the park who respond to the survey. Now, what's the sampling method? Well, I can definitely tell you what it's not. There's no systematic thing happening. It's not every fifth person. There's nothing random happening. There are no groups being chosen. There are no categories where we're picking a few of each kind, so it's not stratified. Um, depending on the details, it's either I'm leaning towards convenience because uh, we're just handing out questionnaires at the park where we are. Or it's not clear whether it's going to be self-selected. Um, uh, you know, if these people are sort of being given the option of filling out the survey or saying no thank you, you kind of have to believe that they would have the option. You know, it's free country and all. I'm going to go with convenience. I'm going to say that it's not self-selected because they hand out questionnaires to parents who bring their children to the park. All right, so they're putting these questionnaires in people's hands. It's not that um, they are having some questionnaires that are out and uh, people can just come by and grab one if they want. They're like uh, putting questionnaires in the hands of, um, of these parents. So uh, I'm going to go with convenience on this one. Now the potential bias I'm hoping is obvious. The population is city residents, all city residents. Um, but here we're only handing out questionnaires to parents who bring their children to the park. All right, that's two different specific groups. There are a lot of ci city residents out there who aren't parents at all, who might have some thoughts about having their tax dollars um, spent on children when if they don't have any children. And um, even uh, there are parents out there who maybe never take their kids to the park. Um, and so even if they are parents, maybe they have some thoughts about spending their tax dollars um, on a park that they don't use. So um, potential bias is uh, only talking to parents who bring their children to the park and excluding all of the people who aren't parents and all of the people who or do not bring their kids to the park. Okay, so there you go. Read that over. It's basically what I just now said. <laughs> All right, what about number nine? A researcher wants to determine the effect of different grades of gasoline on the gas mileage of cars. The two grades of gasoline being tested are regular and premium, and the cars used in the test will be 10 sedans and 10 compacts. The researcher believes that the type of car will also affect the gas mileage. Outline an appropriate block design for the experiment using the type of car as the blocking variable. Alright, so look, the block design is when basically you do the same experiment twice, um, once with each category. So sometimes we'll do the experiment once with men and then another time with women. All right, we'll break it down like that. Um, or we'll have an experiment that happens once with children and then another one with adults, you know, if we know that these groups are going to behave differently. But in this case, the two different uh, categories are, um, we have sedans and compact cars. So we're going to set up an experiment and one block will be an experiment on sedans and another block will be the same experiment on compact cars. All right, so here's your block design. Like I said, um, you take your 10 sedans and you randomly assign them into two groups um, of five cars each. And then uh, you randomly assign those groups to one of the two types of gas. Um, and then, of course, you compare gas mileage. And then you do the same exact thing over again with your 10 compact cars. So that's what a block design looks like. 
For part B, let's describe in detail the design of a matched pairs experiment in which each car serves as its own control. Well, they're practically telling you how to do it by saying that, or they're reminding us what matched pairs means. But here we go. All right, so we have 20 cars. So um, for matched pairs experiment, you will take your 20 cars and randomly assign them into two groups, uh, two groups of 10. Group 1 cars will get uh, 5 gallons, uh, and I'm, I'm making this part up, exactly uh, how much gas they get. Um, I'm designing the experiment, so um, this is uh, one way you could do it. Group 1 cars will first get 5 gallons of regular gas, and we will record how far each car can travel before running out of gas. Um, that's your gas mileage. Um, then the group car one cars will get five gallons of premium gas. So notice they get uh, five gallons of regular gas first, and then um, they get five gallons of premium, premium gas. Again, we record the distance each car can travel before running out of gas. Um, each car is compared with itself to see if it went further on regular gas or premium gas. All right, so so far that's just the 10 cars of group one. Then we do the same thing with the cars in group two. The difference is um, in the group two cars, we will give them the premium gas first, and then we'll do the regular gas second. All right, so that's a key feature of matched pairs. Um, there's always the two treatments, and um, each group is getting both treatments, uh, but the reason why you have to have two groups is because one group has to do the first treatment and then the second treatment, and then the other group has to do it the other way around, the second treatment and then the first treatment, or you know what I mean. Um, let's go ahead and, uh, you were not asked to draw a diagram of this, but um, you could be. So let's go ahead and do a matched pairs diagram so you can remember what that looks like. And here it is. So here's what your uh, matched pairs design would look like. You take your 20 cars, you randomly assign them to two groups. Uh, you randomly assign those groups to this, uh, the different series of treatments. And of course, um, one group will get the regular gas and then the premium gas and then the other group will get the premium gas and then the regular gas. So there's random assignment here, so we're not saying that group one automatically gets this and group two gets that. Group one could get the premium and then regular. We don't know. It's random. Um, but then, of course, we compare same car gas mileage, all right, like we described. Each car gets compared with itself. Okay, so one more time, this is matched pairs, all right, where um, each um, subject gets both treatments in a row, and uh, as opposed to this was block design, where you basically uh, separate out um, the subjects into two categories or more, and you basically run the same experiment twice. Um, but in this, in this case, um, each subject is only getting one treatment or the other. They're not getting both treatments. And that is our lesson on experimental design.